Welcome to Pre-Algebra with Miss Betsy. Today we are finishing up our chapter where we've been studying how to find area, surface area, and volume by studying how you determine the volume of both a pyramid and of a cone. If you're using the same text that I am, I'm now in chapter 12, section 7. I'm on page 427 of my text, which is Pre-Algebra for Christian Schools, published by Bob Jones University Press. I'm using the first edition. So, if this is not your text, no big deal. You find the volume of a pyramid, the volume of a cone, exactly the same way, no matter what text you're using. Before we get started, our silly question for today is, what do you get when dinosaurs crash their cars? Tyrannosaurus rex, of course. I have made another attempt, let's see, looks like I have this maybe out of the picture, just a little bit, so I'm going to walk over here and zoom this out, just a teeny tiny little hair, or drop it, pull it up, whatever it is that I have to do, there. So you see that I have made two three-dimensional sketches here one of a pyramid and one of a cone. And you think of the, the pyramid classically, probably of those huge pyramids that were built in Egypt. And a pyramid that we have right here is actually a square base. You like put your fingers in the middle of that square, pull it up to a point at the top. So you end up with a square on the bottom and four triangular sides being the pyramid. But actually a pyramid can have a triangular base or, or a different base, you know, any differently shaped base at the bottom of it. It can be a trapezoid, it can be a quadrilateral, it can be a triangle. But this pyramid here that we're using for our example has as its base a square pyramid. It has as its base it's a square. And then with this cone over here, cone is something that's very easy to come up with. You know, the cheap ice cream cones, you know, not the fancy ones now where they're, where they're the hand-rolled waffle cones or even not hand-rolled but the irregular edges. But the old ones, like you'd buy a frozen drumstick ice cream cone, where, the, where you have the base of this ice cream cone is a circle, and then it's pulled up to the point, it's top. So this is like uh, like the old-fashioned dunce caps that, that you sometimes find in, in old books. So the base of a cone is a circle. You reach down and pull up from the very center of that to the top point, and that's what you have for a cone. And if you think, you can see that there's a real connection, a similarity between pyramids and, I uh, lost the words, between pyramids and prisms and between cones and cylinders. Because we have the height of this prism, we have the, 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 the base. We have the height of this cone and we have the base. And when we were finding the volume of a prism, the volume of that prism was the area of the base. Here it would be 8 times 8 times the height, if this had actually been a prism with straight sides on it. But it's not. It's pulled up to a point here. But we see that there is a, is a real correlation between a pyramid and a cylinder. Let's say that we had a rectangular box, I didn't mean cylinder, between a pyramid and a prism. If we had a box that was square on the bottom, 8 centimeters by 8 centimeters, and the height of that box was 12 centimeters. And then we had this cone here. And let's go ahead and fill up our pyramid call it a cone, it's, it's a straight-sided cone, but it's technically called a pyramid. Let me write this down so that you will remember this. This is a pyramid, has straight sides, pyramid. A cone has a surface, a, a lateral surface going around it. If you would fill up this pyramid here, turn it upside down, fill it up with rice, and pour that into your rectangular box that has that is 8 inches by 8 inches by 12 inches high, it would take three 
times. You'd have to fill that pyramid three times before the prism was filled. And then let's just go ahead and say that you took this cone and you turned it so that you could fill it with rice and you pour that into a cylinder. See we have a radius here of four. We have a height of six on this cone. Let's say that you also had a cylinder circle at the bottom had a radius of four. The height of that cylinder was six. You fill up that cone right here with rice, dump it into the cylinder once, fill it up twice, fill it up and dump it a third time, and then finally your cylinder would be filled up. So you see that whether you have a pyramid or whether you have a cone, the relationship is the same. The volume of the pyramid is one-third the volume of a prism because you have to use it three times. The volume of the cone is one-third the volume of the cylinder because you have to fill that cone up three times to, in order to be able to fill up the cylinder. So, the volume of the pyramid, I'm sorry, the volume of the prism was the area of the big base, the area of the base, times the height. So the area, here all of this area, volume, remember what I've said, you've got to be so very, very careful with making sure that you understand your vocabulary. It's, it's easy to get up here and talk and use the wrong word, so you have to know Area is a flat surface. Volume is what you fill up a three-dimensional surface. The volume of a prism was the area of the base times the height. So the volume of a pyramid is one-third the area of the base times the height. We also saw that the volume of a cylinder was the area of the circle, pi r squared, times the height. That's the area of the volumes. I'm so sorry I keep using this wrong. We're talking about volume. The volume of the cylinder, how much, uh, how many cubic units it takes to fill that volume up. It's the area of the circle times the height. For the cone, it's one-third the volume of a cylinder. Regardless of what the base is, it could be a square base, it could be a rectangular base, it could be a quadrilateral. The way that you find the volume of a pyramid is that's one-third the product of the base times the height. So let's go ahead and look at this one. This is example one. It says we have a square pyramid here. The base is eight centimeters times eight centimeters. So the volume is going to be one third times eight squared. Remember the area of a circle is the side squared times the height. And right here it says our height is 12 centimeters. The height goes from the point of the pyramid perpendicularly down to the base. And we have that that height is 12 centimeters. So the volume is equal to 64 times 4. 8 times 8 is 64. One third of 12 is 4. When you do that multiplication, which the way my tongue is getting twisted around now, let me look at this. We have a volume of 256 cubic units. Our units here are centimeters. So we have 256 cubic centimeters. Okay. A pyramid is related to a prism. A prism, for example, would be a rectangular box. A pyramid has any shape at the bottom here. It's a square shape. 
the way it's formed, it's like you put your fingers down and right in the center of that square shape, pull it up to a point at the top. So you have four shapes here, four surfaces that are triangular coming up and meeting a point. The relationship between the volume of a pyramid and the volume of a rectangular box is that you can fill that pyramid up three times with, say, rice you know, before you have filled up the rectangular box itself. So the volume of a pyramid is one-third the area of the base times the height. And for those of you who are in my class, you know I've, I've given you this cheat sheet, so I'm going to allow you to write down your formulas but you, before you take a test, but you have to be able to understand what those formulas are talking about. You have the same relationship going on over here with a cone. The cone is related to the cylinder. Cylinder is like a can of soup. The volume of a cone is one-third the volume of a cylinder. The volume of a cylinder was found by finding the area of the circle, which is pi r squared, times the height of that cylinder. So, one-third pi r squared h gives us the volume of the cone. What you have to be really careful for is realize that our formula is talking about the radius. If you're giving a, if, and here we have a dim uh, dimension given to us, it's the radius, it's four centimeters. The height is six centimeters. If they had given us the diameter of that circle and asked you to find the volume of this cone, one-third pi r squared h, you would have to remember that diameter, you have to take half of the diameter in order to come up with your radius. So let's just go ahead now and plug in these values. Volume is equal to one-thirds pi, and we know that pi is 3.14, times the radius squared, times the radius squared, times the height, which is 6. So our volume is one-third times pi times 16 times 6. Now, go ahead and key this into your computer or into your calculator. And we have 100.48. And because we had to use an approximation for pi, we don't say that the volume is exactly equal to this. We say that the volume is approximately equal to 100.48 cubic centimeters. Remember, units of volume are always cubic. Units of area are always square. We're trying to get you to understand relationships between pyramids and prisms, between cones and cylinders. We're trying to get you to understand surface area the relationships between different shapes and this, all of this in this chapter, which is very much geometry. But what you've got to be able to do at this level is recognize the formulas, plug in the values correctly, and do your calculations to come up with the proper solution to your problem. The rest of this understanding will come as you work with it more in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 and geometry. That's the end of this chapter. See you next time.